Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week by CAD Tech Seminars. You can find us on the web at thebimguys.com. We do Revit training, Navisworks training, AutoCAD training, support, and also we do BIM modeling and coordination and clash detection. So if you have any questions about that, check us out on the, check us out on the web at thebimguys.com. All right, let's get into the tip here today. We're going to talk about how to customize your keynotes file. In the previous video, we talked about how to create or use the keynotes. And um, in this video, we're going to talk about how to edit the keynote file to fit your needs. So the first thing we're going to do is go up top and drop down the keynotes. Here, let's go to maybe a plan so we have something to look at. We'll go to first floor here. This is just a little sample file we use in training. And I'm going to go down here to, for instance, keynote settings. Now, when you go to keynote settings, you'll see here Revit is telling you where it's pulling from. Now, if you've just started using Revit or you haven't tinkered with this, it usually pulls a standard Keynotes Imperial Library or one of the similar libraries. If you want to go browsing, you can go browse and find out where they are. Now, they actually sit inside of the US Imperial sublibrary, which is under Autodesk Revit 2019 libraries. Now, if you're not in the US, you'll have another sub menu here, but that's where they reside, pretty much where all your families reside. So you'll see them in here toward the bottom. And being that we're looking for a TXT file, you'll see them show up. I'm going to change the view to a list. And you'll notice there are a handful of different, of different types we can use. There's the Imperial, then there's the 2004, 2010. Each one of these have different formats and setups. So if, if you want to check out, let's say, the 2010, you hit Open. Um, it'll load it. And if you want to view it, you hit View. You'll notice how this is broken down into the divisions. This is broken down into 48 divisions. If you use an earlier one, or broke, it'll be broken down into different ones. So you choose the one you want. And for this example, we're going to start with, let's say, uh, Keynotes Imperial. Now, I don't want to mess up the original one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on this thing and I'm going to hit copy. And then I'm just going to right click and hit paste. Now, what I've done is made a copy of this file. And the nice thing about this is, even though we're in the browser, you can actually do some fun things here. See, I can renote this, etc. And I'm going to say Revit Keynotes, uh, the BIM guys. Now, what I've done is I've made a copy of it. I haven't destroyed the original. So if I do tank this one, I can always go back and re remake it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. And I hit open. Now, what it's doing is you'll see it's loaded and all as well. Now you're thinking, all right, so let's see how it works. I hit OK. I come over here and I five to keynotes. I hit element keynote. Now I'm going to try to choose something that I haven't chose before. Now you see that window has a question mark. So it, has, it hasn't uh, used the keynote setting yet. So now if I click on this and I click and click, it comes up and asks me what I want to use. Now notice that it's pulling the 16 divisions here because we're using a different set. So I can work my way down, go to 2000. And see, it says here, it says basic site materials and methods. And you're like, okay, I could choose that. Or I could come down a little further and choose whatever I want. So at one point, you, you get down to a point, you say, okay, that is gravel. I know it's not really gravel, it's a window, but you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and hit okay on that. And you'll see how now it says it's using that particular um, tag. Now, I'm going to change this over to the, the tags that come with Revit. I'm going to go insert, load family. And we're going to go out to... Our annotation, we scroll down, you'll see in here it's keynote tag. I load that up because it has more um, has more abilities than the one that was happened to be in our little training file. What I wanted to show you is you can load these up, and now notice I'm going to use the keynote text. And notice how it says gravel. So the nice thing about this little tool is you can use it for text also. It doesn't have to be just numbers. If you want to change it, double click on it, the text, and it'll actually reopen up the box. Well, let's see if we get that to work. There we go. And I can say compacted soil now. I hit OK on that, and you'll notice how it changes it. The nice thing about it is this is an element keynote. So if I was to go up top, annotate keynote, and use an element keynote, the next time I hit a similar window, you'll notice that it's pulling a certain uh, number. Now, the reason it's pulling a number is because it's set to pull number. We're going to set, set it to text. And now from now on, whenever I hit that window, it'll pull that note. So you can start to see how this can be a powerful tool. For instance, if I'm in North Elevation and I go up top and I keynote, it's going to pull the same information. So I don't have to try to remember, how did Bob type it? Did he type CMU or did he type 8-inch CMU or did he type in, uh, you know, concrete masonry unit? Nope, I just touch the object and it places the text 
as is. Now you'll notice it, notice it's in lowercase. So let's pull in directly and how it's coming out of that file. So let's say you're not happy with what's pulling from the file, or you want to change that file. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to bring up my File Explorer, and here we are. Now, where I went was Program Data, Autodesk, Revit 2019, Libraries, U.S. Imperial, and you can see the keynotes are in here. If I was to refresh this, you'll notice that you're going to see the one that's going to say the BIM guys in it. Now, sometimes you can't find this file. The reason being is under View. If you say Hidden Items, see if I turn that off, don't show me Hidden Items. If I go to my C drive, notice I do not see the app data folder. So turn on hidden let me see see hidden items and you'll notice I come down here and you'll see this one called program data. You'll notice it still shows it as a light uh, tinted folder means it is a hidden folder by default and now we can drive down and you can actually find all the goodness down here. It's not bad to go bopping through that folder because you'll kind of find out where Revit keeps the f files, what families are in there, all that good stuff. So I'm going to drill on down and you'll see we have again libraries. So that was an easy uh, way to kind of get here. There's other ways, but that's one way to get there. Now I'm going to scroll to the bottom, and I'm going to take the one that says Revit Keynotes, the BIM guys, right click, and I'm going to choose Open With. I'm going to open with Notepad. The reason I use Notepad is because I don't want the um, I don't want it to add extra information like Word would do. So by using Notepad, we open it up, and you'll see here's the file. I'm going to pull it on the screen. Let me get rid of this. Get that out the way. Pull this over. Woohoo! Here we are. Now, uh, how it's broken down is the Revit um, breaks this down into, if it, you may not see it right off the bat, but it's three columns. You have the, the keynote number, then we have the keynote descriptor, and then we have the keynote organizer. So how we put these in, if we start to scroll down, you'll notice here it says basic site materials and methods. You'll see it's 2050 right here. Now, if I wanted to add one in, you can follow the same exact syntax that's here. Now, it's all set up by tabs. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to type a new number. 0, 2, 5, let's say 1. All right. I'll tab over, and I'm going to say, uh, we've got chicken feet. That way it stands out. And then we hit tab again, and we say, what grouping do we want it under? 0, 2,000. So what that's going to do is it put it under other divisions. So if you want to put it under 1500, you're like, well, wait a second. There's not one up here. It's because it'll go under the subset right here. So we have subsets, okay? So this is going to be a subset, and then you can actually put subsets under subsets. So where you put this number tells pretty much tells Revit to put it under that sequence of events. So as we come down here, you'll see there's a 2200, and we go down to 22100. So that's going to go under here, that's going to go under there, and that's how it organizes it out. A little confusing, but it says pretty much put this item under this item. That's kind of how it stacks out. Let's see what we have here at File Save. Now, I've saved the file, but Revit doesn't naturally go pull that data. So what we want to do, we have to reload that file. I hit Save, I go here, and then I'm going to go to Keynote Settings, and I'm going to hit Reload. At this point, now the file has been updated successfully, and let's see what happens. I'm going to double click on this like we did earlier. And as I go down, or go up, excuse me, remember we said we want to put our chicken feet under 2,000. So see how it, it took it and put it under 2,000. That's the logic that it uses. So it's really not that complicated. Once you've uh, kind of decoded it, you hit OK, and now that window is chicken feet. The interesting thing is we told Revit that this is a chicken foot. Let's hit Edit Type. You'll notice that there is the number, excuse me, right there. 20051. So 20051 is now built into the family type. And from this point forward, all of those windows will now be chicken feet. Let's go back to our first floor and notice how they updated. So that's kind of how the logic of this thing works. Now, if that seems too complicated, there is a plug-in or an add-on. You can go up to the little basket up here or the little thing that looks like an X or an arrow, two arrows. Um, there is a product called Kiwi Tools. Uh, Kiwi Tools, or Kiwi, produces uh, bonus tools. As you can see, I have them loaded up top. I think they're great. Um, they also load a Keynote editing tool, which works live. So you can actually edit it on the fly. So if you use Keynotes a lot and you're looking for maybe an easier way, you might look into a plugin. But that's how they work. If you have any questions, you can check us out on the web at thememguys.com. Thank you.